Hello to the whole Pima community and family. I am Emily Gastelum, one um, very curious <laughs> student here at Pima, um, starting the first ever podcast here at Pima. Woo! Woo! So I'm very excited as well as very excited to introduce my guest because she was my formal, former teacher before in my honors 101 class here at Pima. So let me give a warm welcome to Miss Frankie Rowling. Thank you. Woo! Cue sound effects. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how this works, but we're going to, I'm going to just do sound yeah, effects. I just saw some I'm emojis. Like, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> I'm like, you guys can see me. Y'all can see my jazz hands. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so Frankie. How you been? It's so, it's weird. I mean, I'm honored to see you in person. It's a big deal. But it's been a long ride to it, get here. It has been a long it's ride. Been a long We've ride. only seen each other in little Through Zoom screens. screens and in an online class. So. No, yeah. And you get to see yourself. Like, it's, at least to me, during these whole COVID times, it's been so weird seeing everybody online. You get used to it, seeing everybody online. Yeah. But then when you get the news that you're like, okay. You're coming back on campus. Right. You're seeing your teachers now. Like, it was crazy for me because this is my first time, to be honest, these past semesters, fall and this spring semester, that I came back in person. And I'm an official college student. Right? Yeah. I'm getting the whole experience now. Welcome. This is <laughs> Thank what it you. is, girl. Turns <laughs> this out. is what it turned out to be. It's a lot more <laughs> lush. People no, have yeah. shoes and legs and clothes and height. I know. I'm just so excited to see the everybody. Joy. This is yes. Pima Joy. This is classic no, Pima yes. Joy. Friendliness. It's the Pima community. There's it's love. It's the joy. It's the family. Yeah. It's no. the family. But yes, getting into like why you're here and why we're doing this in the first place. We're going to ask you questions okay. about the Pima, the whole Pima experience. I know that we all have been in COVID. We're sick and tired of some of us have been online for like me. I graduated in high school in 2020, so I'm the quarantine class. Mm, you are. <laughs> I'm the quarantine class. I made history. Yeah. But for you, Frankie, how has that been as a teacher? Like a whole transition that you're told, okay, we're shutting, we're shutting school. You're not coming back on campus. Most likely you guys are going to be online. How has it been for you? Because I've, I've experienced your class online now. Right. I haven't experienced During your class pandemic. in Yes, in person. <laughs> so how has it been for you as a teacher here at Pima? Well, I have a great little story about the very beginning of the lockdown. I had a, a short fiction class the night before spring break. Oh, and wow. I had heard a rumor that we were going to be shutting yeah. down. And so I made the class as one of our writing prompts. I asked them to write to write us out of the pandemic. I was like, right. how is it going to, how are we going to get through this? Mm -hmm. What's it going to be like on the other side? And people yeah. wrote amazing, beautiful, different things. But the extent of our imagination was like six months. Yeah, Everybody thought it was going to last six months. So For looking real. back at mm -hmm. that on our way into the third year, I'm like, whoa. Honestly, like this whole thing has been a whirlwind of events, emotions. We've yeah. been through a lot. Oh. Students Don't tell suffering. me. <laughs> they they are. Me online, having to be an academic student that was like perfect in person, had to do everything. To go online and trans, like, yeah. it was a whole other thing. It doesn't thing. translate as easily as it, we thought. It doesn't. It was hard at first. Don't get me wrong. It was easy because some teachers were like, okay, we'll be back in like a couple of weeks. Only we'll just give the kids like some work and then we'll come back. But no, <laughs> it became my reality. Now coming back, it's it's great to yeah. see like teachers like Frankie, teachers like Valerie. It's it's crazy because now I get to experience what the real Pima Community College yeah. is about. And just right, last girl. week, I experienced my first play here. Oh, so, so like great. the whole event. Yeah. But moving on from that. Okay. So I know that you're a teacher here at Pima. You t have taught and are teaching many courses, but you you have been a student as well why did you choose writing why was writing that number one thing that was like in your hand you're like i'm gonna pursue this yeah mm -hmm. i i have always been a writer since like fifth grade i just <laughs> loved it but the thing is is that i was a reader first i yeah. was the kind of kid who would pretend 
um, to go to sleep and then have a book and try to get the hall light <laughs> on my book, you yes. know, or go to the bathroom and spend some time in there with my book. It's like it's the phone era, but just with the book. <laughs> totally. <laughs> right. Yeah. Back in the old days. Yes. But there's no, it has no, no light behind it, the book. Yeah. But, um, but I just love reading. And so it was kind of natural that I moved and, and literature. So oh, yeah. I, I was, you know, an English major when I was an undergraduate, yeah. but I was also taking creative writing classes and I just loved it so much. And then I sort of traveled and lived in different places. Mm-hmm. I lived in Wyoming for a while. And uh, every time, like behind my own back, I would always yeah. be writing in a notebook, even though I, was mm-hmm. pr- I pretended to myself I was giving up writing. And then I would always be <laughs> secretly writing behind my own back. And so like, I'm writing again. Yeah. Sorry. And it's, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> it is totally a way that I process my existence. I, I just, I put care, I put my experiences into characters, whether they're monsters or real people, and I just let them act them out. And then I learn how to move forward. I learn who I am. I learn how... And then, of course, studying craft, I learned different ways of saying the things. Oh, yeah. And it, I'll be learning for the rest of my life. No, oh, yeah. And now that this whole pandemic and how you said, like, you're writing your monsters, you're writing your whole experience, I feel like this pandemic also has highlighted a part of us that we became our own authors because, like, we all have different stories throughout this whole pandemic. Oh, yeah. I I wrote a little short story about, you know, especially that lockdown experience. Yeah. And uh, there's a monster, and she's been iced into her cave. Ooh. And so she's stuck in her cave with her memories. <laughs> <laughs> and she's so mad. Every so often, she throws herself against the ice wall and scratches and at it, tries to get out. <laughs> she has all these bat friends. Eventually, oh, she has wow. to eat them. So sad. <laughs> Nobody's That's a picked whole it up. Story. I've, I've submitted it quite a bit. Nobody's oh, picked wow. it up, but it's what it was like. <laughs> As we all know. So, moving on to the next question to see what conversations we come up with. Um, you yourself have been an accomplished writer, like how we have been talking so far. You have published three books. Exciting, guys. <laughs> um, she has public three books. Um, tell us a little bit about those three books. Well, my first book is a collection of short stories yeah. that um, each one uh, is dealing with a modern, a, a, a person in the modern world trying to figure out how to have relationships, yeah. how to build a home. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of med- magical realism that happens in my fiction. Oh, wow. Like one character wakes up one morning and she's growing a tail. And <laughs> I, I love this uh, story. And actually, my uh, colleague Sandra Shaw teaches it a lot in her classes because it's just perfect for college students because you are faced with growing your tail, Mm T-A-L-E. What's your life going to look like? Who do you want to be? How do you want to move in the world? Mm -hmm. And so just like that, this character grows this tail. And of course, she hates it at first. She's like, oh my God, I'm a freak. (laughs) What girl wants a tail? (laughs) But she has to learn how to care for it because it's part of her. And you have to learn to care for who you really are authentically, what your curiosities Mm -hmm. are, where you want to go in the life. So that that book has stories like that. Yeah. And then um, I have a novella called Dr. That, that book's called The Sin Eater and Other Stories. Yes. Then I have a novella called Dr. Mm-hmm. Porchiat's Dream where there's this doctor in like the 1720s. And um, he, belie- he has a dream that the soul is an organ in the body oh. and that he could find it. And um, mm-hmm. But back in those days, autopsies were not considered... Um, uh, doable. They were not permissible. <laughs> They're not a thing. They were not cross cool. They were not cool. <laughs> crossed. <laughs> and so he became obsessed with this idea, and um, and his town kind of turns on him. Yeah. But what I'm sort of studying there is is the idea that the soul is actually our narratives. Is mm-hmm. the narrative? It's the same kind of idea in the tale, I guess. Yeah. I'm seeing now that, <laughs> the that, trend. <laughs> the, yeah. The the life you make is the soul that you are creating it through yeah. your lifetime. Because soul is a metaphor in itself. Mm-hmm. And so I, I kind of think of soul as a narrative in that book that was published in, a, in an anthology of novellas. Yeah. And then my most recent book is called The Grief Manuscript, oh. which is um, super sad, <laughs> as, you, as you might imagine. FYI, <laughs> super sad. Super sad. <laughs> it's about divorce and the dying Ooh. throes of a woman in the midst of a divorce. Yeah. You know, Ooh. partly biographical. <laughs> and, um, and, but that one's really imagistic yeah. and imaginative oh, yeah. and written in little little sections, which I think oh, has wow. been really influenced by social media and posts. Like, y- like little captions post. yes. and discussion almost, posts. Almost, There you yeah. go. Yeah. Tell in. Yeah. Bring that into 
today's modern. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that form of writing has been used more now. Yeah. I've learned this. Also, Valerie has taught me this a lot as well. Yeah. A lot of people don't really like, they see a big paragraph and they're like, oh, no. Yeah. I'm not reading this. That last book is with those sections. I feel like a lot of people would gravitate towards that because yeah. now uh, nowadays, like how you said, it's social media has like those type of captions. They might be long, but a lot of people are going to be drawn to it. Like, oh, what's going on? Right. Or TikTok, what's... you like you're scrolling through. Exactly. But, like, read the first line and you keep going. Yeah. Or like um, the comments because you're like, oh, OK, this video. Let me see what people are saying. And sometimes there's people that have paragraphs amongst paragraphs. And you're like, oh, this seems like nothing. But you go to school and they put you that same exact. Oh, my God. It's right. hard work. <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm a, I mean, I apply this to me because I have been there. I've been there, done that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's an amazing resource to have. And if you guys want to check out those books, they're also on Amazon. I just, um, <laughs> when was it? On Thursday, I checked. And they're Thanks. still available. And I have a little website, plug. Frankie and she has a website, com. guys. She's professional. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you can trust Frankie. So moving on to the next question. It's a little bit more personal. And probably I'll share my story as well with you. Okay. Um, your birth name's shocker, guys. It's Elizabeth. <laughs> but you go by Frankie. Why is that? Good question. You know, I went to, to grad school in my 30s because I didn't oh, wow. really know what yes. I wanted to uh -huh. do. And so I went back to grad school and it took three days to, for me. I went to a long distance program, yeah. Goddard College for writing, creative mm -hmm. writing. And um, it took me three days to get there. There was a huge snowstorm and many adventures on oh, a plane, yeah. off a plane, rented a car, made a friend, had to stay with a stranger overnight. Mm -hmm. And then I got on campus and I, w I was like, oh, I am supposed to be here. I've never been in a place where I was more, where I belonged more yeah. because I was a writer. I was mm -hmm. among my people. And um, somebody suddenly asked me out to dinner and I'd only been there like an hour. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, sure. <laughs> so I went with this group of people and I was oh, telling wow. a story about being a kid and losing my flute in the snow, which yes. I did. It was unfortunate. It was not my flute. Anyway, <laughs> and somebody leaned down the table and said what's your name again and I was like oh you could call me Frank and that person said oh, wow. Frankie the flute loser <laughs> and I was like exactly and then the next day at breakfast these people that I'd had dinner yeah. with were like hey Frankie hey Frankie and I felt like I'd been seen I felt yeah. like my true name you're like my identity <laughs> and so then I just became Frankie among writers and then as I moved on in my life yeah. I just I just embraced it and oh yeah definitely like me for example my name is really basic emily okay we can get even more basic i used to always tell my mom like why did you name me emily is the most basic name you could ever give me i mean me. a lot of writers yeah really good writers are named so emily. yes so <laughs> i would always fight with my mother i would always be like mom call me jasmine Call me. I would change my name a hundred times a day to see what would fit. But I'm like, I would always come back to Emily. I'm like, this is my origin. Yes, I'm a hundred percent from Mex. I'm Mexican, hundred mm -hmm. percent. But like, it, it kind of angered me sometimes because I was like, Emily, that's such an American name for me. I would always want to be like an Alejandra, um, Jocelyn, um, I don't know, Melody, something in Spanish. And like, right. all of my siblings have had middle names, and they all kind of go all by their middle names, and I'm the only one that goes by her first name. Mm. But I mean, I've grown to love it. Everybody knows me here by Emily. In high school, a lot of people used to know me by DJM because I used to be a whole. Well, that's awfully cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Can I call you DJM now? Of course. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, it was either DJM or DJ MEG. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I had my little like 10 seconds of fame in high school. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm over. I'm Emily from now. Now on or M for short. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Names are a funny thing to talk about. There's a lot of people. They're great. Who, it's power. Yeah, no, I became power. more powerful once I went You're like by Frankie. Frankie. Frankie has really great boundaries. Frankie is no, all yeah. about writing, all about helping other people write. I'm just yeah. I'm really not distracted. No, it yeah. Was a power, it was a power move. But I mean, moving on to the next topic, <laughs> I'm like, let's move on. Let's <laughs> let's keep let's keep this show keep on the road. Keep us on track, DJ. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk more about Pima. Okay, great. 
um what classes do you teach and what do you enjoy about those classes because i know you have a variety to choose from yes <laughs> i do <laughs> I um I mostly now I teach creative writing and uh, honors 101. I'm an mm-hmm. honors coordinator for West Campus, and I'm the creative writing discipline coordinator. Yes. And um, I love teaching honors because I'm teaching students how to be critical thinkers, mm-hmm. how to work collaboratively, yeah. and how to become activists. No, oh, yeah, active in their communities, work serving others, but also thinking about what they care about professionally personally Mm -hmm. or academically and bringing those interests into the work. I love that. And watching that, that that means, you know, the class is never dull. And my favorite thing there is to make sure that each person is being encouraged towards the text they want to write, that I'm not just impressing some grid over their writing, Mm -hmm. but it's more like a beckoning them towards themselves and Mm -hmm. giving them the craft tools they want. No, yeah. There's an alchemy in the classroom. This is is a thing that that the teachers can be learning as much as the students if you're constantly open to learning. I mean, because the students are changing. Students have changed a lot in the past 12 years that I've been at Pima. They've Mm -hmm. just evolved um, and 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 being open to what are they're listening to, what they're thinking about, how they are in the world. Yeah. It both keeps me young. So thanks, everybody. <laughs> but also just um, it helps me grow as a person and be aware of mm-hmm. my culture and be with it and um, yeah. and, you know, and to be open to the ways that t- students, you know, take what you've what you've been, what you're teaching them, yeah. and develop that it teaches you as well how to think about things in new ways. It's really beautiful. No, it is. Um, tell us a little bit more about Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is such a cool thing. It <laughs> has been um, published since 1990. Oh wow! And it has been winning national awards since 1993. Oh, uh, wow. From the Community yes. College Council of Humanities. And wow. um, in the past, few, well, the past two years, we actually sent ours in and they've never judged the contest or finished the contest because <laughs> of the pandemic. Yeah. But um, it's a student run. There's a student staff and yes. student content magazine. So it's oh, all wow. about the creative body of Pima. Yes. And it's so... Um, it's it's just really incredible because it's artwork and poetry and prose, and um, the student staff is they're just devoted. They basically devote themselves to yeah. the creativity of their peers Amazing. and and honor them by selecting things that will work well mm-hmm. together and things that are at the height of their you know of their forms, um, and then um, we. We, in the staff, they, yeah. they become a staff. They sort of run the class. Mm-hmm. And we have to promote and we have to gather and we have to, um, to vote on the, the pieces. Yeah. And um, when I took over, I just took over in 2020. And so I'd had, you know, like maybe three or four weeks with the students in yeah. class. And then we went virtual. And it was the first yeah. time I was doing it. And <laughs> I'm just going to say it was a messy process. <laughs> it is. I mean, nothing's but pretty at first. <laughs> nothing's pretty, but we somehow managed to make it work. And we yeah. had to move to a digital platform like Pima Post, yeah. too. This is what, what we're talking about, the way the world is changing. Yeah. Pima Post and Sanskrit both had to assume digital platforms yeah. to, re- to remain modern, to remain viable. Current, even. I mean, mm-hmm. we couldn't get... There was no way for us to get the magazine into people's hands in 2020. Oh, yeah. And then in 2020, we, I mean, 2021, we still had similar problems. So we stayed digital. So both of those are uh, available online. But yeah. here's the cool thing is that we used to only print like 1,200, 700 to 1,200 Ooh, copies per mm-hmm. year. But now the um, the 2020 edition yes. has, been, uh, has been viewed over 7,000 times. Oh, my God. So it's kind of cool yeah. how many other people get to see it. Oh, yeah. So this year we're going to try and do a digital and a print version. And, a print. and we have a very small staff, really awesome staff working hard because also enrollment's down a little bit. So oh, we have yeah. fewer students submitting. Mm-hmm. So we're like okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're still really trying. But the stuff, we're getting wonderful mm-hmm. stuff as usual. So yes, moving on gotcha. to like the last questions. <laughs> um, I'm going to put this one together. Okay. So what are some misconceptions that people might have about teachers and authors? Okay. Um, I'll do t- teachers first because yes. we already touched on this. Yes. But, um, I think that 
te- you know, that sometimes we forget that teachers are not gatekeepers. Teachers yes. are mentors and guides. Mm-hmm. We are here to show you the mountain yeah. that we've already traveled. <laughs> yeah. And um, that students and teachers can be, you know, open to that alchemy is, oh, yeah. is really the magical, the magical place of the classroom. Mm-hmm. But then um, about authors, I think people think that... Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I silenced well, the phone. We were talking about modernity. No, yeah, we were like, okay, we know how it happens. No, yeah. But um, <laughs> the things about authors is that people think once you write one book that you know how to write other books. Yes. But every book is its own creature. Every text is its own creature and wants maybe a different voice or a different style or a different genre. And just being yes. open to that is um, it's just kind of vital. Honestly, that wraps up our little podcast. I'm so excited for this to be the first and to have such an amazing person here sitting right across from me from this table. Well, thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Honestly, couldn't ask for a better partner. Honestly, this felt like a little TED Talk, honestly. (laughs) To be honest with you, loved it. TED Talk all day, every day. (laughs) But I mean, I feel like this wraps up our penal podcast. I'm Emily Gastelum going to wrap off this Pima podcast once and for all (laughs) onward and upward onward (laughs) and yeah guys hope you have a wonderful day and we're off